Hey, it's Sam, and today on Sugar Spun Run, I'll be showing you how to make these fun and adorable dirt cookies. Today's recipe is a great one for doing with the kids, and most likely one or both of mine will make an appearance during this recipe, we will see. Now there are a couple steps, but this recipe does come together pretty quickly. We're going to start by getting our oven preheating to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, grab yourself a large mixing bowl, and to this, we're going to add one cup of softened unsalted butter. We're also going to add our sugar. Now, I'll be using my kitchen scale today, which if you don't have a kitchen scale, I highly recommend that you get one because it's just going to take you to the next level in your baking. It makes everything more precise. Always tear your scale first, make sure it reads zero, and you'll need a cup or 200 grams of granulated sugar for this recipe. Now we're also using some brown sugar, which helps give these cookies a nice depth of flavor. You'll need three fourths cup or 150 grams. And I always do lightly pack it to help with any lumps that might be in that brown sugar. It helps break them up. All right, now let's grab our electric mixer. You could alternatively make today's recipe in a stand mixer with a paddle attachment, but today I will be using my electric hand mixer. And we'll beat these ingredients together until they are light and fluffy. All right, when your ingredients are nicely creamed together, we're going to add our eggs. So for today's recipe, and most recipes, you should be using room temperature eggs. We're going to add one large egg. Crack that in a separate bowl. You can see my chickens are not pulling their weight right now because these are store-bought eggs I'm using today. Not super happy about that. This is what happens when you buy pretty chickens that like colorful eggs instead of practical chickens. For our second egg, we are just using the egg yolk. So we're going to split the egg in half and drop that white out. You can save it for another recipe. I'll probably give this one to my dogs, but don't add it into your cookie dough. We're just adding the yolk today because if we were to add the white, it would make the cookie dough, it would add more moisture and liquid into the cookie dough and it would make the cookies more prone to spreading. I want a more compact dough that's not going to spread too much. That way it can hold that dirt and gummy worm that we're going to be putting on top. Now before we mix these things up again, we'll also add some vanilla extract. I add a teaspoon of vanilla. Again, it's great for adding some nice depth of flavor to the cookie. A lot of people think that you don't need to use vanilla extract if you're making something chocolate and Sure, you could get away without adding it, but vanilla complements chocolate so well. It's going to bring out some great flavors, so don't skip the vanilla. Someone said that the other day, and I just, I was, I was just so appalled to see that suggestion. All right, let's go ahead and stir in that egg and vanilla, those eggs and vanilla. All right, and we're good with our wet ingredients for a minute. Set those aside, grab your scale again, and a medium-sized mixing bowl. We're going to combine our dry ingredients here. For today's recipe, we are going to be using all-purpose flour, and we will be adding two and a fourth cups of all-purpose flour. That translates to 280 grams. Measuring flour is one of the easiest places for people to go wrong because a lot of people will take their measuring cup and they'll just scoop out the flour and they'll accidentally pack it in and you end up using way more flour than you were really supposed to. When you use a kitchen scale, you eliminate that risk. You know you're using exactly as much flour as you should be and like I said, it's just going to elevate your baking game. All right, next let's add our cocoa powder. Don't forget to tear your scale. We're using natural unsweetened cocoa powder for today's recipe. I just prefer to use this one here. We're going to add a half cup or 50 grams. This will give us a nice earthy color for our dirt cookie base. We'll also be adding one teaspoon of baking powder. Let me find the baking powder. And one fourth teaspoon of baking soda. We'll give the cookie just a little bit of spread and three fourths teaspoon of table salt. All right, let's go ahead and whisk these ingredients together until everything is nicely combined. Let's bring back our butter mixture and we'll gradually add the dry ingredients to the wet and stir until everything is combined. Anytime you are adding dry ingredients to wet, I do recommend doing it gradually unless explicitly stated otherwise. If you add all the flour at once, it's going to be difficult to work everything together and you could end up with a dry, crumbly dough. I usually add the dry ingredients in three or four parts. All right, once you think you have everything nicely combined, use your spatula to scrape the sides and bottom of the bowl. Make sure there are no hidden pockets of flour or anything like that. All right, one thing I love about this dough is that it doesn't need to be chilled. There's nothing wrong with chilling it. You can cover it, you can pop it in the fridge for a while, come back to it later, but I'm going to go ahead and get it right in the oven now. 
We're going to scoop the dough by about two tablespoon sized scoops. So I'm doing rounded one and a half tablespoons. And just to make the dough look nice and neat and uniform, I roll the dough into balls, into smooth balls, I should say. And we're going to space these at least two inches apart on our baking sheet. They're going to spread some. We want to give them a little bit of room to breathe. All right, we'll take these over to our preheated oven where we're going to bake them in the center rack for 10 to 11 minutes. All right, once these come out of the oven, within one minute, you're going to want to take something with a clean flat bottom, like a measuring cup, and you're going to want to lightly flatten each cookie. We're just going to lightly and evenly press down. This is going to give us a flat surface to add our dirt frosting and our gummy worms. It also makes the cookie a little more dense and fudgy, which I also love, that's a bonus. We're going to let these cookies cool on the baking sheet for at least five to 10 minutes before we carefully remove them to a cooling rack to cool completely. The cookies do need to be completely cool before we put the frosting on. I have had a special guest star join me while the cookies have been cooling. And while they're cooling, what are we gonna do, Luke? What are we going to make? The frosting. The dirt frosting. So we're going to grab ourselves a large mixing bowl. And Luke, we need six tablespoons of softened unsalted butter and six ounces of softened brick style cream cheese. Thank you so much. Are you gonna help me? Hold it there and I'll knock it off. Perfect, will you set that down for me? I'm going to use my electric mixer to cream these two ingredients together until they're nicely combined and lump free. Not sure if you just heard my cat over there. She wanted to, Saucy wanted to make herself known. I'm cooking in my real kitchen with my kids and my animals all over the place, so things can get a little crazy sometimes. You never know who's gonna show up either, right, Luke? Yeah, sometimes you're here, sometimes you're not. Now, quick note on the cream cheese in the icing. We tried a couple of different frostings for these cookies and a lot of them were too sweet. By using cream cheese, we really temper the sweetness. It adds such a nice depth of flavor, just making these really tasty cookies that aren't too sweet. I see, we're gonna use that in just a minute. But first, we're going to gradually add our sugar. You need two and two thirds cup, go ahead, put that right in, of powdered sugar for this recipe. Here, I'm gonna dump some in too. This is 333 grams. I probably haven't mentioned grams for every ingredient, but they are all listed in the printable recipe in the description. We'll gradually add this powdered sugar, that way we can try to minimize the risk of sending it all over the kitchen and ourselves, right Luke? Good job. We'll knock that in right there. Good job. We'll stir this in. All right, Luke, what's the next thing we need today? Cocoa powder. That's right. Do you know how much we need? Nope. We need nope. a half cup or 50 grams of cocoa powder. Will you grab the cocoa for me? We are right there, great job. We're also going to need to add just a little bit of salt, just a pinch, like under an eighth teaspoon. Next, we're going to add a vanilla extract. We'll add three fourths teaspoon of vanilla extract. Hold it, hold it for me and I'll pour it. Hold it right there, keep it over the bowl. This is not the official recommended way for measuring vanilla. Go ahead and add that in, perfect. We'll stir everything together until these ingredients are nicely combined. All right, if Luke will grab me a spatula, we're going to do a quick scrape of the sides and bottom of the bowl because I wanna make sure everything is nicely combined and we don't have any cocoa powder or sugar hiding anywhere. This looks pretty good. Now you can spread this frosting directly on the cookies, no problem. My preference is to put it in a piping bag. I'm not using a piping tip on this bag, I'm just using a disposable one and I've snipped the end off. It just makes the application a little easier for me, but do whatever works best for you. That looks yummy. It does look yummy. All right, Luke, we are going to do this together. I am going to go ahead and put the frosting on. And then if you would do me the favor, if you would help me out, if you would do me the honors, after I do the frosting, you can do the cookie crumbs and the gummy worms. And just so everyone knows, these are just Oreo cookie crumbs. We have pulverized six of them to super fine crumbs. Yours don't have to be this fine, but it really has more of that dirt look if they're super fine. We also have some gummy worms. Use your favorite brand. All right, frosting time. All right, Luke, we put a little bit of cookie crumbs on one. 
Well, actually not a little, you can cover the whole thing with cookie crumbs. I shouldn't have said a little bit. That's right. beautiful. This is a joint effort, clearly. All right, I'm going to smooth these slightly. Okay. Now the cookie crumbs, you can do as much or as little cookie crumbs on each cookie as you'd like. And I did put a piece of wax paper under this cooling rack just because it's going to make the cleanup a little bit easier. All right, final touch. What's the last thing we add to this recipe? Beautiful. And that is how you make these fun dirt cookies. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. If you try it, leave me a comment and let me know what you think because I always love hearing from you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Do you give it a thumbs up? <laughs> it's delicious. Oops. This looks like I've muted nothing today. Can I try? No. Stuck as a lid. Stuck as a lid. That's what I always say. Oh my gosh. What is wrong with me? I appreciate your dedication.